Philip Webster, and I'm a genomic scientist at Belsera, formerly known as Seven Bridges. And today I'll be speaking to you about communicating workflow complexity across ecosystems. We'll be using our BCO app in order to link CWL and BCOs in order to update a biocompute object public database. So first I want to talk about some of the strengths of CWL for any who may not be aware. Uh, CWLs, or common workflow languages, are Docker-contained bioinformatic pipelines that provide a consistent computational environment as well as automatically generates logs for every task, which includes the app version used, the parameters required, as well as the input and output files. It also requires additional information to make sure that the tool can work reproducibly across platforms and operating systems. However, there's been an issue in the past where common workflow languages, the output changes depending on whether you run it on maybe a Mac or Windows. So there's been a real need to come up with a way to make bioinformatics reproducible. And you may be thinking, I didn't know there was a reproducible, re reproducibility problem in bioinformatics. Don't you just run the stats, get the output? Well, as I was saying, that output can change depending on your platform, and that's due to the batch effect, the bane of every scientist's existence. And so uh, BCO objects address this need for reproducibility as well as regulatory research needs by providing a way for evaluation, validation, verification, and reproducibility. So for an example of an average pipeline or a normal pipeline, you'd have your usable data inputs, a metagenome, a human genome, viral genome, you'd have your experimental parameters such as uh, your single nucleotide polymorphisms probably, you'd feed it into an analysis pipeline for you know, genetic or genomic analyses, and the data generated is a genotype or gene counts or variant counts, but there's a range of errors um, that can be caused by this analysis pipeline. It could be a copy number variant error or a false negative, false positive. And so BCOs aim to not only address this gap in reproducibility within bioinformatics, but also set a standard for inclusivity and a low barrier for entry so that anyone, no matter their institute, can create and share their workflows and analyses and foster collaboration. So an example of this would be how BCO satisfies the findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, otherwise known as FAIR, data principles, and it also upholds the NIH standards for clinical data, which maintains that it has to be maintained at all research stages, including bioinformatic analyses. So BCOs through the BCO app will help and strengthen not only those collaborations I mentioned, but also make it more streamlined and easier for researchers who may not have already had the means to submit maybe something to the Federal Drug Administration or to the FDA. And so the BCO also supports regulatory uh, submission standards. It allows for efficient evaluation and validation for require, of requirements for clinical trial or any agency submission that you want to use for BCOs. So you can imagine a scenario where you have stakeholders. There's the uh, Food and Drug Administration. There's the uh, platform company or even, you know, a principal investigator. And they are following our uh, FAIR uh, reproducibility. Uh, they want workflows, ontologies, and repositories, and so a way to get that and to share it is through creating or generating a BCO. And so we're big fans of CWL here at Belsera, and we really want to help push the integration. We think it's going to be great for the scientific community, and one of the ways we thought to push that was to make generating biocompute objects a lot easier for people, and that'll both push BCOs and CWL as a major tool among researchers. And we've published on this, so when we made the app, we did a publication for the tool. Uh, it includes an overview, some source code, the examples, and a link to the Docker container. And we're currently working on an update that will allow you to push your biocompute objects to your personal GitHub to, make, to provide you another method for sharing your analyses. And so now I'm actually going to walk you through a quick demo of the BCO app. So this is our BCO app. As you can see, we have a text composer, a CWL composer, and a platform composer. So I'm going to take you through the CWL composer. 
And what this allows you to do, it is allows you to update, it allows you to upload, excuse me, uh, CWLs from your local and generate a BCO. So for example, I have a folder of workflow examples that I am aware works, and I'm gonna use a differential ex expression using salmon alignment analysis that I made for a Purdue seminar that I did. Who says you can't teach while in industry? So that's uploaded as a JSON file. Let me click next. You can see that the BCO app generates a nice image with the inputs, outputs, and everything in between in all those steps. There's a provenance domain with general information about the app. There's a usability domain which explains the app and how it's used, a quick summary of the app. We're going to click next. There's an execution domain. So where is it executed from? It's Seven Bridges platform. Now Belsera, if you missed it. Uh, there's a description domain. So each node in that workflow, each step, uh, has an explanation here that I added. Uh, it's really a conglomeration of other workflows and other apps uh, available on the Cancer Genomics Cloud. And so all that information will be here because I put it there. And there's an input and output domain. This is where if you set up your inputs and outputs for the app or expected or required, you would see them here. Since this was for a, a general workshop and more teaching the concepts of RNA-seq, I left this out of that workflow. And finally, you have the last field, and this is where we're going to finally generate and preview our BCO. So the P BCO is generated. I can either export it as a JSON, or I can export it as a PDF. And as you can see, there's a PDF with all the information that we just clicked through. So that will also be shareable. And then if you, this is that push to GitHub that I mentioned, you can upload to one of our platforms, such as the Cancer Genomics Cloud, where we have a lot of publicly available workflows that a lot of researchers use for their own analyses. They also create their own workflows, which really has, makes this tool even more helpful for them. Or you can upload directly to the public file compute object org website. And so what you need is you have to have a token, a BCO prefix, and we're just going to use BCO drafter. Okay, after we select a BCO drafter, we're going to go ahead and put in our authentication token. We already have an account on the BioCompute Objects public, app, uh, public uh, website, so I'm just going to go ahead and put mine in, and then we're going to push it. And you see you get a return message for successful. It's on the organization. So if you were to log in and look at the list of your BCOs, you'd see this as your latest push. And then you can, that can be then be reviewed by an agency such as the FDA or maybe another collaborator that also uses the website. Point, you've probably heard me mention the CGC or Cancer Genomics Cloud a numerous number of times, and I promise that is not some kind of shameless plug. It is actually a very cool tool that many of our users and maybe even some of you already or will use in the future. So if you're unaware, as, as, was, as I was stating previously, the Cancer Genomics Cloud um, is a powerful, uh, stable, secure, and customizable cloud storage platform. We host a wide array of data, a lot of cancer model data, population science, immunology, and clinical trials. Researchers are able to pull openly available data or apply for closed access data in which to run their workflows on. And so if someone, say, working on the CGC, wants to upload a workflow, they can paste their authentication token from the CGC. They can select a project that they work on. I'm going to choose the BCO CWL examples. And there's, here's all the workflows I've used. I'm actually going to pick another one here. Uh, we're going to go with Broad's best practice for RNA-seq variant calling, since I feel like I mentioned that earlier, variant calling earlier. And this is a publicly available app. You can find it on the CGC. And here it is, visualized like normal. Everything is just as it was when we uploaded it from our local, except now you've 
uploaded it directly from one of our platforms, you know it works. You've got your results on our platform. So if you share those results with a regulatory agency or you decide to share them with a granting agency or a collaborator, you can also generate this BCO. Go through the exact same methods for making a PDF, a J viewable JSON, or uploading, and you get the same result. So this is probably the coolest part of the tool for me and part of that interoperability and ease of access. So that is the end of our talk, also the end of our examples. I thank you all for taking the time to come and listen. I'd first like to thank our collaborators uh, at George Washington University, as well as DNA Nexus, the FDA, and the NIH Common Fund. And then I'd also like to acknowledge everyone on the Vail Sara team, past and present, that contributed to the development of this app. It was really a large concerted team effort and we couldn't be prouder of the result. I couldn't be prouder of the result and I'm very happy to actually be able to work on such a cool tool uh, that will help with reproducibility. I've always been all about sharing data and sharing analyses. So uh, Dennis Dean is the project manager, or not project manager, but the leader of our team who rallies us all together. And then uh, Sonar, who is one of the best coders I have ever met in my life. And I was fortunate enough to have train me Philip Webster. So I thank you for coming. We will take this time to answer any questions you may have. And thank you.